In this video, we are going to discuss about blood pressure in human beings. Blood pressure in man. It is also written in short form BP, that is blood pressure. Now, blood pressure in man, it is defined as a pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of blood vessels. So, blood pressure. It is pressure exerted by blood on the wall of blood vessels. Now, while discussing about the internal structure of human heart, we have seen that when the blood it is pumped by the ventricles into the artery, then through the artery. The blood reaches into the arterioles, smaller arteries, that is arterioles, then reaches up to the different organs, then with the help of venules and veins, it again comes back into the heart. So this we are discussing the complete double circulation. That means when the blood it is pumped by the ventricles into the arteries, so the pressure it is maximum in the arteries and it is going to lower down as it passes into the organs and vents. So this definition which was made here, pressure exerted by blood on the wall of the blood vessels, it is with respect to all the blood vessels. But when we are going to measure the blood pressure in man, we are going to measure it from the arteries because in the arteries it is maximum. So we are using the term arterial blood pressure. Now what is arterial blood pressure? Same definition. But there is a difference that it is on the wall of arteries. So arterial blood pressure is the pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of arteries. So this is the arterial blood pressure in human beings which is generally measured from the arteries. Now this arterial blood pressure in man it is of two categories. It is of two types systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Now what is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure? Now if you are able to recall, while discussing about the internal structure of heart, we have seen that the contraction of the chambers of the human heart, it is called as systole and the relaxation of the chambers of the human heart, it is called as diastole. That means, what is systolic blood pressure? During the contraction of ventricles. It is maximum. The blood is pumped into the arteries and at that time the pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of the arteries is maximum. That is systolic blood pressure. So during ventricular systole or at the end of ventricular systole the pressure which is exerted. So here we are going to write down at the end of ventricular systole. The pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of the arteries is maximum. It is called as systolic blood pressure. And in an adult normal human being, it is 120 millimeters of mercury. Now, millimeters of mercury is a unit used for measuring the blood pressure. So, the in adult normal adult human being, the systolic blood pressure it is. 120 millimeters of mercury. Now diastolic, same. Now, what is the difference? Now diastolic phase means the relaxation of the chambers. So when the ventricles are fully relaxed, ventricles are fully relaxed. At that time, the pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of the arteries is minimum. And that is called as diastolic blood pressure. And in normal adult human being, the diastolic blood pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury. 
so in human beings arterial blood pressure is the pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of the arteries it is of two types diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure systolic blood pressure is the pressure exerted by the blood on the wall of the arteries at the end of ventricular systole and normally it is 120 millimeters of mercury diastolic blood pressure is the pressure exerted by the blood during diastolic phase that is when the ventricles are fully relaxed and normally it is 80 millimeters of mercury and normally the blood pressure in human beings it is written as diastolic blood pressure upon diastolic blood pressure that is 120 upon 80 millimeters of mercury many a times the unit it is not written but it is assumed that it is millimeters of mercury so it is 120 upon 80 millimeters of mercury and instrument which is used for measuring the blood pressure in human beings it is called as sphygmomanometer so Sphygmomanometer. It is an instrument used for measuring the blood pressure in human beings. And with the help of this instrument, sphygmomanometer, blood pressure is measured from the upper arm, that is, from the brachial artery of upper arm. And the measurement of blood pressure, arterial blood pressure, with the help of sphygmomanometer, it is indirect method. It is indirect method. That means directly the blood pressure it is not measured from the upper arm or from the brachial artery, but it is measured indirectly. That means the blood pressure. First of all, it is converted into ear pressure and then it is measured with the help of sphygmomanometer. So it is indirect method or this method is also called as escalatory method. So it is escalatory or indirect method of measuring the blood pressure in human beings. That is blood pressure it is converted into ear pressure and then it is measured and the person who discovered or who modified the sphygmomanometer or the modern sphygmomanometer the person is Dr. Nikolai so this person Dr. Nikolai Korotkov he first of all discovered the modern sphygmomanometer Dr. Nikolai Korotkov. He discovered the modern Spigmo manometer. Now, we will have to discuss about the measurement of blood pressure with the help of Spigmo manometer. Now, in man, arterial blood pressure is of two types systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure. Normally, it is written as systolic upon diastolic, and in normal human beings, it is. 120 upon 80 millimeters of mercury measured with the help of sphygmomanometer indirectly which is called as escalatory method in which blood pressure is converted into ear pressure and the modern sphygmomanometer or we are going to say it as a PP apparatus it is invented by Dr. Nikolai Korotkov. Now how it is measured? Now by discussing about the measurement of blood pressure with the help of sphygmomanometer by escalatory method first we will have to discuss about this instrument how it is made for this instrument sphygmomanometer it consists of a tube now on this tube there are there is a millimeter scale and it is 20 40 80, 100, 120, 40, 60 and up to 200 and above. So this is a scale or a tube which has a millimeter scale. 
Now this tube it is connected to a bulb. Now this bulb from the upper side it is connected to a to a tube. So you can draw with the another color. It is connected to a tube. Now this tube is again connected to a calf. This car again is connected to another tube and a pump, a rubber bulb or a pump which has a screw for releasing the pressure. Now in this bulb there is mercury, so it consists of mercury. This is car. This is pump. So this is the arrangement of modern spectrum manometer. Now how it is measured with the help of this instrument. So the first is, first step while measuring the blood pressure with the help of spigmo manometer is first this cuff. It is wrapped around our upper arm. So the cuff is wrapped around upper arm the first step the cuff it is wrapped around the upper arm and then air is pumped with the help of this pump or a rubber bulb into this cuff now what happens as soon as we are going to pump the air into this cuff the air also flows with the help of this tube into this mercury towards this mercury and this mercury level starts to increase. Now, we are going to pump the air into this cup till the mercury level reaches up to 200 millimeters of mercury. So, first we will have to wrap the cup around our upper arm and then with the help of bulb, we are going to pump the air into that cup. Through the cup, air passes into this bulb and Mercury, it is it starts to increase, or the level of the mercury starts to increase in this tube. And we, we are going to allow this level to increase till it reaches up to 200. Now, what happens at this pressure? At this pressure, 200 millimeters of mercury, the radial artery which is present in our wrist, the radial artery collapses. And due to this, there is no flow of the blood in this part. There is no flow of the blood in the radial artery. So this is the first step. Now secondly, we will have to do two to three things simultaneously. Then when the radial artery collapses, there is no flow of the blood is there. Then we will have to put the ring of the stethoscope. And now we will have to use stethoscope and we will have to hit the ring of the stethoscope at this point at the brachial artery of upper arm. So, after the mercury level reaches up to 200, the radial artery collapses, there is no flow of the blood is there. Now, put the ring of the stethoscope on the brachial artery of upper arm and slowly release the air pressure. As soon as we start releasing the air pressure, the mercury level it starts to decrease and at a particular point first sound is heard in the stethoscope so when we pump the air the level reaches up to 200 radial artery collapses then we are going to put the ring of the stethoscope on the brachial artery at that time there is no sound because there is no air flow and as soon as we are going to release the air pressure with the help of this screw. The mercury level starts to decrease and at a particular point, the first sound of blood flow, it is heard in the stethoscope. That is systolic blood pressure. So for example, we are measuring it in a normal adult human being. What happens? The level starts to decrease at 120. 
millimeters of mercury. The first sound of blood flow is heard, and that is that gives us systolic blood pressure. Then go on, continue, continue releasing the air pressure. Still, the mercury level starts to decrease, and at a particular point again, the sound disappears, and at that time, it is diastolic blood pressure. And in normal human beings, it is. 80 millimeters of mercury. So in this way, the blood pressure it is measured in human beings with the help of sphygmomanometer by indirect or escalatory method. So the normal systolic blood pressure is 120 millimeters of mercury. Normal diastolic blood pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury. And now we are going to use a term called as pulse pressure. Now this pulse pressure is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure. That is 120 above 120 minus 80 millimeters of mercury. So this pulse pressure in human beings is 40 millimeters of mercury, which is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure. In this way, the blood pressure is measured in human beings with the help of sphygmomanometer. There are a number of factors which are responsible for making change in the blood pressure. They are responsible either for increasing the blood pressure or are responsible for decreasing the blood pressure. And when the blood pressure is increased than the normal in human beings, then that pressure it is called as high blood pressure or it is also called as hypertension. So when it is increased than the normal, then it is called as high blood pressure or it is called as hypertension. And when it is decreased than the normal, then it is called as low blood pressure or hypotension. And there are a number of factors which are responsible for making change in the blood pressure. Hypertension or Hypotension and the first factor here I am going to write first factor responsible for making change in the blood pressure is age. So what happens at older age after the age of 50 years, 55, 60 years, the blood vessels, arteries are going to become hard and they are not the elasticity of that arteries it is not constant. And at that time they are not capable of maintaining the blood pressure. So age or hardening of artery is also responsible for high blood pressure. Second factor responsible for high blood pressure is deposition of some substances in the arteries. Due to the deposition of these substances in the artery, the diameter is going to reduce. And this is also responsible for making change in the blood pressure. So like this, there are a number of factors responsible for making change in the blood pressure. Either responsible for increase in the blood pressure or decrease in the blood pressure. So this is all about blood pressure in human beings. And we have discussed that it is of two types, systolic and diastolic and measured in human beings with the help of sphygmomanometer in indirect or escalatory method. Thank you.